I am Michael Bryan. As of April 28th, the year 2020, over 3 million people in the world have been infected with the coronavirus. Over 200,000 people globally have died as a result of the virus. Like many of you, I know people who have died, and it hurts. It makes one sad. And one day I asked myself, why are Christians dying? Why are people who believe in God dying? If Psalm 91 is about God's ability to protect those who seek him, those who believe in him, then why are Christians dying? I'm going to address that question in this edition of The Regal Word. Using Psalm 91 as a point of reference, and I won't read it in its entirety, it's 16 verses, you can read it on your own time, but I will read the first three verses, and it reads as follows. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. A Christian dwells in the secret place of the Most High God. A Christian makes God their refuge and their fortress. A Christian trusts God. The Bible says, surely God will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. He'll deliver you from your enemy that sets traps for you. He'll deliver you from the demons that set traps for you. He'll deliver you from the devil that sets traps for you. He'll deliver you from evil and wicked people who set traps for you. These people who want to kill you. God will deliver you from them, is what the word says. The word also says that God will deliver you from the perilous pestilence. The coronavirus is a perilous pestilence. It is wreaking havoc all over the globe. Those people who are infected, they have to stay home 14, 21 days. Those people who don't have it, they're locked down. Governments have told them to stay home to stop the spread of the virus, which has impacted their life. On so many levels, this perilous pestilence has threatened the earth to the extent that over 200,000 people or have already lost their lives and more are projected to lose their life. But the Bible says that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God, who, are, who, who is in the shadow of the Almighty, who trusts in God, who makes, them, makes God his refuge and his fortress, these things God will not allow to happen. If you read down further in Psalm 91, it says that the perilous pestilence won't even come near your dwelling place. These are promises, promises of protection that Psalm 91 is speaking about. So my question is, since God in his word, God never lies. The Bible says that his word will accomplish the thing that he purposed it to accomplish. And since God's word and God breathed into man and breathed on man to cause them to write scripture. So this can't be a lie. So then the question is, why are people who believe in God, why are Christians dying? Now, I realize that this is a sensitive question. This is a sensitive topic. When you talk about death of loved ones, when you talk about challenging or questioning why God is permitting something to happen that's sensitive. But I'm using Psalm 91, which is a prayer or a song of protection as a point of reference. And I'm asking the question. I don't know if, you're at, if you've asked this question, but I'm asking God, why are Christians dying? Why are people that I saw yesterday before this whole thing broke loose, why are deacons dying? Why are pastors dying? Why are mothers of the church 
and fathers in the church, why are they dying? This is what I, I want to know. I don't know how you feel, but I've asked God this question, and then I went searching into the scripture. And so I've come up with these reasons, and you may have many more reasons. And you can feel free to put comments in the comments section, and we can have a discussion about it. But here are some reasons why I believe the Christians are dying during this perilous pestilence. I believe that there are Christians... Yes, they've confessed with their mouth and that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, and they believe it in their hearts. But I believe that there are Christians who have not sought the dwelling place, the secret place of the Most High God. You have to remember that God is a spirit, and you worship God in spirit and in truth. So physical nature has nothing to do with it. The secret place is a spiritual place where you meet God, where you dwell with God. You commune with God. You form a relationship and you develop a relationship with God. And notice it says dwell. Dwell is something that you do permanently. I believe that there's Christians who have not sought God in that manner, who don't dwell with him in the secret place often. I believe that there are Christians who have not made God their refuge. They have not made God their fortress. In times of trouble, they don't run to God. They go ask their friends or their best friends or their mother or their father or elders. They go ask everyone but God, why is something happening? They, all, they ask everyone but God to deliver them from something that they're going through, to change their circumstance. They ask everyone but God, what should they do? They don't seek God's word. They don't seek, and God will talk to you. When you seek God, he will talk to you. He will either talk to you directly, you'll hear a thought in your mind, and you will test that thought, and you will know that it's from God. He will have your friend speak to you, and you'll know that God is speaking. But you didn't go to your friend seeking their worldly advice. You went to your friend because you know that they are a good Christian, that they have a relationship with God, and you fellowship with them because you might hear God's word in something that they say, in the scripture that they read. But it's all God. See, the point is that only God can deliver you. No one but God can deliver you. People might say the doctors are developing a vaccination. The doctors are doing this. God's hand is on those doctors. All wisdom and knowledge comes from God. All disciplines come from God. So when you don't make God your refuge, when you don't make him your fortress, when you don't trust in God, and you go seeking advice and counsel from everywhere else but God, you don't trust that God will do. If you've prayed to God and you've asked for deliverance, if you don't trust, you can't be double-minded. You have to believe in your heart firmly that what you ask of God that he will deliver. That is showing that you have trust and you have faith in him. You cannot be double-minded. When you are sincere and when you have, have a level of commitment that God is going to do what you've asked him to do, God will do it. But when you're double-minded and you waver, that shows that you don't really trust God. And so these are reasons why that in this conditional promise, if you're not doing these things, then the protection that comes with it is null and void. The other reason why Christians may be dying during this pandemic is that it was their time to die. You know, people were born in different decades, People were, have different birth dates, but clearly the 200,000 plus people who have died, God knew that they were going to die as a result of this pandemic. That's something that they all had in common. And nothing happens by happenstance, not in life and death. God knew, God knows when I'm going to die. I don't know when I'm going to die, but I try to live life to the fullest. I try to live life as God would have me live. So that 
when I die, if I'm, if I'm aware that I'm going to die, that I don't fear death. And so that's the thing. These people, it was their time to die. If it wasn't their time to die, God would have stepped in and they wouldn't be dead. We are talking about the people who have died, but what about the people that God has delivered who were healed and are now walking the face of the earth? And that's in the hundreds of hundreds of thousands. The news will project the, the calamity and the negative aspect, but God is still at work right now. He's watching everything. He is in control. And let me tell you something else. God is more concerned with your life. God is more concerned with your spirit. God is more concerned with your soul than he is with your physical being. Now, don't get me wrong. God will provide for you. He's the consummate father. If you ask him, if you're in need physically, you need food, you need shelter, you need deliverance from a health issue, your family needs prayer, your friends need prayer, God will step in and he will deliver you. And it will impact you physically. But God is more concerned with your spirit because your body is going to die. You can live as healthy as you want to live. But you're going to die. We were born to die. So God is not concerned with something that has a short lifespan. God is concerned with your soul and with your spirit that has a long lifespan. People say they want to be immortal. You're already immortal. Your soul will live. Your spirit will live forever. The question is, where are you going to live? If you believe in Jesus Christ and you acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior, then you live with God eternally, forever. But if you reject the word of God that says that Jesus Christ is an atonement of our sins, that we were sinful in nature, therefore God, who loves us so much, that he didn't want us to die and go to hell. He didn't want us to die, go through judgment, and then be thrown into the lake of fire. He loves us so much that he sacrificed his son for us so that we could have eternal life with him, not separated from him. So I encourage you today, don't be concerned with death because Jesus Christ has victory over death. And if you're in Jesus Christ, you have the victory because the Bible says in first Thessalonians, I have to read this to you. This is, this is awesome. It says in first Thessalonians for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Death has lost its sting. It's like walking through a door to another room. When we walk through the door of death and we're dead, and then God, his son comes with a tr and the trumpet sounds, we will all be raised and we will then be given, I have to read you another scripture. Because it says it better than I could say it to you. It says, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 52. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptibly, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. My brothers and sisters in Christ, be encouraged. Death is not the end. Your family members who have died, being Christians, you will see them again in heaven. You will see them again in the air. And those loved ones that you don't see and that you cry for, the Bible in Revelation says that God will wipe your tears away. So be encouraged. And if you're not a believer in Christ, I encourage you, I implore you, to accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. All you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is God's atonement, God's peace offering. He sacrificed his own son so that you would live eternally with him. Don't be so heavily invested in this world. 
because this world and us, we all shall pass. But there's a new world that's coming in the book of Revelation, which one day we'll speak about. But in the book of Revelation, there's a new heaven and there's a new earth. There's a new Jerusalem and we will dwell with the Lord forever. So I leave you that with that. I just want you to be encouraged. I want you to hang on to God. Don't let go of your faith. Read your scripture. Study the Bible. Fellowship with the saints. And love each other. And love yourself. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. I love you with a Christian love. With a godly love. I pray peace over you and your families. I pray sustenance and protection in your life in the precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you've been touched by this message, please show your support by liking the video, sharing the video with your friends, family, and loved ones so that they can be encouraged by the word that was spoken. On the screen right now is a box with my picture in it. Please click on it to subscribe. There's two videos that I suggest that you watch in the boxes. You can click on those as well. Until God brings us together again, God bless you.